So today we're talking about how we can conference like a champ. And I'm bringing on a special guest to give us some tips and tricks on insights on how we can be conference champion. And really, what does that mean? Well, he's got five tips before, during, and after to get the most out of your conference so that you don't feel drained at the end of it. Let's bring on Adam Kranitz, a SaaS marketing leader. Adam, thank you so much for joining me. John, thanks for having me. I appreciate you making time and uh, having me on the show. I'm pretty excited to be here. So Adam, I got to give everybody a little backstory. You and I have been friends and colleagues for a while now when we both worked at separate companies. And now that you're out there in the world, you wanted to provide some value and insights on how to conference like a champion. And before we do that, how about you give everybody a little backstory on yourself? Yeah. So, so look, John, I've been, I've been producing, attending, uh, running corporate events going back to 1997. My very first industry trade show was NAB 1997. Uh, it's more than 20 years. Uh, and uh, AWS events, Microsoft events, you name it. I've been to it. I produced it, set up a booth. And over those years, there have been some consistent gotchas and do's and don'ts that I've seen people do by attending. So I'm going to give you the perspective of a corporate marketing guy who's run trade shows and been on the booth and see the interaction between when people walk up and what they could be doing better to leverage their experience there, get the most out of that experience and represent their brand, their company in the best way possible. And so I'm pretty excited to kind of share with you, you know, the top five, there's a lot more. I'm going to give you some of my five things I see happen most often that are easy, low hanging fruit to kind of do today or, or at your next event. We've got a big event. We've got NAB coming up you know, in a couple of months, which is a big industry trade show for media and entertainment. And we've got some AWS events coming up as well. So now is the time we're going into conference season to put these into play. So let's, uh, let's hit into it. At a real quick. So yeah. is this really to help me from a booth person perspective or an attendee perspective? Attendee perspective. Great question, John. So I'm going to give you my perspective as somebody who's run booths and what I see from the attendees coming up to the booth. So I want you to look at each of these five tips from the perspective of, hey, my company has paid for me to be here. In the case of like an AWS reInvent, that's a significant investment for a group of people, right? So how can I make the best use out of my time there, my company's investment in me being there and advancing my career by leveraging this opportunity? So attendee perspective. So as most of you are familiar, and if you haven't attended, but you've seen them online, like even an AWS reInvent, which is a week long thing, which there's so much happening, so much going on. You don't know where to go, what to do, what boot to hit up, and you can't see everything and anything in there. But Adam's going to give us some tips, not only on that and getting the most out of it, but Adam, I'm going to assume you're going to give us some tips that we can, you know, really feel energized afterwards and that we don't feel like we just totally drained and we just want to crash the week afterwards, right? Well, you're going to still crash. You're going to get that post event like flu uh, or, or, or lagging cough for sure. You're going to get all that. But, you know, part of what this is, is um, it, it's you, you have to charge your battery to 100% when you go to a trade show. And at the end of that event, when you get home, man, that battery is at like 5%. And you got to definitely plug yourself back in and recharge because it takes a lot of emotional, a lot of mental stamina and a lot of physical stamina to push through a week long event and talk to people all day long and, and interact and, and think on your feet and run from one place to another and eat bad food and stay in a bed that's super uncomfortable and the pillows hurting my neck. And I got to get from uh, the, the, my hotel is 10 miles away from the conference floor and I got to run there. It's a crazy, like, it's like, it should be like a, a reality show on a network <laughs> of like running the conference, like uh, American, you know, conference uh, uh, challenge or something like that. So that's the idea there. Um, is to really how do I how do I run this gauntlet successfully um, and and stay energized and 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 productive along the way? All right, Adam, I'm ready to take some notes because there are a number of events happening this year. We're going to be at whether it's going to be one day. Actually, there's a good question. Does this apply for single day, multi day, or week long events? 
I would say if a company is making an investment in you attending an event for the benefit of your your, your department, your team, this is probably going to be a minimum of a two day event. So most of this is going to be prep. We're going to spend three tips on, three tips on pre show prep. And like any conference, you know, like any uh, a champion prize fighter, um, all the work goes in the prep and being ready for the main event. And so we're going to talk a lot about prep. But generally speaking, you could use these these for these tips for one day, you know, in and out session or a week long event like reinvent. All right, Adam, I got my pen ready. Let's start with some of these, and uh, I'm going to take some all notes right. along the way. I'm going to roll up my sleeve here. Oh, he's getting in. ready for it. <laughs> All right. Let's jump in. All right. How to get the most out of attending your next trade show. Let's jump into one. I'm not going to do a whole presentation here. I'm just going to share a couple of screens really quick. So tip number one, John, this drives me nuts. We're going to start with the basics. For, for all that you can do, the best thing you can do, make sure you have business cards, John. I can't tell you. How many times I've stood on a booth and had an amazing conversation with somebody. And I said, let me get your information. I don't, can, here's my card. Oh, I don't have any cards. Or I ran out of cards. Or the company doesn't give me cards. All right, so you got to do the dance. Let me find a pen. Let me write your information. Okay. We got to have business cards, folks. And here's a couple of things you need to do. Right? Now, I'm talking here, John, about paper business cards. Now, I get it. Totally get it. You've got the RFID things and you got the digital business cards and you got the things that you tap and your phone. Forget about all that. In an, in, in an industry conference where you're bumping elbows and it's loud and it's everything's going on, and you only get 30 seconds to talk to somebody, you don't want to be fumbling around with your phone, right? Or pulling up that app or they don't have the right app or they don't have the right model phone, yada, yada, yada. Nothing beats a paper card to exchange information, even in 2023. I'm not Actually, I was one. about to ask that because you still you still believe in this paper or physical card yes. in this digital age that yes. a business card still provides the same value that it did for like 50 years ago? Listen, I'm not a Luddite. All I'm saying is if you want to do the digital thing and the tap the phone and the RFID card, do it by all means. Bring it along. If somebody wants to do that, that engagement with you, knock yourself out. But in addition, not in place of, have the paper cards too. You got to have the paper cards. So if you work in a large business and you want to do this about two weeks, minimum two weeks before you get on your plane, before you travel, you're going to want to go to your marketing department or whoever, the, 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 the office manager or whoever, and say, I typically don't get cards in my role, but I'm attending this event. Can I get a stack, right? If the marketing department or the office manager can't do that for you, that that's you got to you got to think about that, but you got to go first to go to your team and say, I need business cards for this event. Now, if you're in a situation where you're an independent freelancer or contractor, you can't go to a company. Here's what I need you to do. And by the way, John, this isn't affiliate marketing. This isn't like I'm not getting paid for this, but I got to say, if, if you need to get your own cards, here's what you got to do. You're going to go to moo.com, moo.com. You're going to go to business cards right here. You're going to go original business cards. You're going to go standard. Don't go, don't give me those like weird shaped business cards because they're going to get lost. The thin ones or the square ones. Give me the standard business cards. Then the most important thing, here's a tip, is get the matte finish. Why the matte finish, John is thinking? I'll tell you why. Because somebody during the course of an interview is going to grab a pen and write on your business card, what they were talking to you about before they put it in their pocket. And if you get these glossy ones, that doesn't work. It, it's going to get all smeared. So get the matte card so I can write a little note. So leave some white space on the back of your card or wherever. Somebody can write a note about that interaction with you. Okay. So get the mat, get about a hundred. It's less than, you know, with shipping, it's about 50 bucks, 50 bucks. Get it reimbursed if you can, but 50 bucks, get yourself a pack of a hundred cards. Matt finish your basic information on there. Moo.com, they have templates you can use. You can design it up line. It's all WYSIWYG. It's great. All right. So got to get your cards before the show. Because I'm telling you, when you when this is going to roll into our into a later tip, when you're having that interaction on the booth, you've got to be able to exchange out information 
and make sure that that person knows because when that person gets back to their desk, they're going to go through that stack of business cards. They're going to find you on LinkedIn. They're going to connect. They're going to make a mental note. They're going to put you in Salesforce. They're going to make a note of what you were all about. And if you stand there and say, I don't have a business cards, man, you're moving right to the bottom of the pile. Oh, so, okay. I can see the value of this. You want to know why? And I'm going to give you an example. I was at uh, one of the AWS summits and uh, a lot of the times, you know, and I do actually collect other business cards, but I don't have any of my own, which now I have a note to go get some based off your recommendation. But here's how I do, you know, and I, I would go back through it of all the people that I connected to on LinkedIn during that yeah. time. And then I would write some physical notes and write some notes down, put them into my CRM and be like, okay, yeah. I need to contact this person, this person, this, what did we talk about here? Oh yeah, that's right. Like I, I'll, I'll give you this a little bit deeper. I was at the Chicago summit. I had 11 people that I hooked up to and talked to. I had to take a quick break, go to, to a table and write down all these quick notes be like, okay, uh, we talked this, 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 and remember who I needed to reach out to. Now I can see why still business cards and the value of them. Yeah. And I would say even, you know, if you have a colleague like the head of sales in your department who's not going to the event, say, hey, can you give me a, a 10 or 20 of your cards? I'm going to take them with me as well. And I'm going to give them to a few people as well in case I have that interaction. Hey, you really need to talk to my head of sales. He'd be a great guy for connect with. Here's his, here's, here's his contact information, right? So bring a stack of uh, bring a stack of some of your colleagues who might not be attending, but it would be useful for somebody to know their information. Bring those cards, folks. I don't want to have another conversation on my next booth that, hey, I and I'm terrible with names. This is why, you know, I can remember faces and I can remember where I remember you from, but I cannot connect the name. So I got to have that card. So please, next time you see me, John, or anybody else who's watching this, you come up to my booth, and you have a conversation with me. Like I, the first thing is, hey, Adam, I saw your podcast. Here's my card. All right. All okay. right. So, so and we're still talking pre-tips for this. I can't wait to we get to the actual two show weeks. tips. Re remember, give yourself enough time, like two weeks minimum to order those cards, get them shipped to you before you head out the door. And by the way, put them in your suitcase, stick them in your shoe, in your suitcase, so you don't forget about them, put them in your backpack, put them in a couple of different places. And my last tip is always stick like about four or five of them in your wallet, in your billfold, right? So if you forget your backpack, you set it down or you set your coat down or whatever, you at least have a couple of spares in your wallet ready to go. All right. Gotcha. Makes sense. Cool. All right. Let's get into tip number two right here. Okay. Hey, this looks like a good place to jump in and talk about today's sponsor, Veeam. How would you like to own, control, and protect your data in the cloud? Are you using Salesforce? Veeam has you cover it with Veeam Backup for Salesforce, backing up your Salesforce data effortlessly, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud. Honestly, why wouldn't you back up your most critical CRM data from loss or corruption? Now imagine your sales team coming in and not be able to recover all their information, their notes, their pipeline, because it's the one thing you didn't think you needed to back up. How about doing it effortlessly with Veeam Backup for Salesforce? Well, are there nine reasons that you should back up your Salesforce data? How about just two, data loss and data corruption? Veeam Backup for Salesforce eliminates the risk of you losing your data and metadata due to human error, integration, or other Salesforce data loss scenarios. Check out Veeam Backup for Salesforce today. Now, how about we get you back to that podcast? Let's get into tip number two right here. Okay, let's set the agenda, John. We got to set the agenda. All right, pre-show. It's very important that you map out a battle plan for what you want to see. And all major conferences are going to have an online portal, some more sophisticated than others. Some will have an online portal where it's just basically a calendar, right? A day-to-day. -day, and some will have uh, opportunities for you to select and register for each one and build yourself a calendar, right? The most important thing here you can do when you're attending a trade show is have a battle plan for what you want to do before your feet hit the expo floor or before it hit the sessions floor, right? So again, as soon as you register and as soon as the sessions go live, build that battle plan. Because a lot of these events, as you know, have limited seating capacity for the most important or the more exciting or the most talked about sessions. So you want to get in early. Right. You want to get into those sessions. It's just like, remember, when we used to register for classes in college, the most popular ones, you know, filled up quickly. Yep. 
same concept here. Don't wait till like the day before you leave to set your agenda. As soon as you pay for your tickets, as soon as that portal opens, as soon as uh, as soon as the calendar is available, go in and start building it. You can always update it later. And here's a couple of tips for you. Talk to your manager. Send them a link to the agenda. What things do you think I should see? All right. What for my personal development or professional development? What sessions do you think I should see to bring back insights for the team where it's not for me as an individual contributor, but could benefit the team as I come back and we're talking about that in a later tip for follow-up post-show, right? So build out that agenda. And you know what? I hate to say it, you know, I already know I went there with the paper card, business cards, but print it out as well. Stick it in your wallet, stick it in your pocket. So, you know, where I'm going to, again, that, that going back to the, you know, the first day on campus at college, right? You had that agenda of where was my class and what hall was it in and how long is it going to take me to get there? Look at the floor plan for the trade show. You know, John, sometimes they stick session one over here and session two, you know, South Hall at the Sands or in a whole different, you know, whole different venue. So it's not like walking across, you know, the, the expo hall, you got to get to two different buildings, give yourself enough time to make that track, right? So build out that plan. What am I doing first thing in the morning? Give yourself some time for lunch, give yourself some time for a break to grab some water, stay hydrated but build out that agenda that's based on input from your manager, your team, what's the most impactful thing that I can do, and then kind of stack rank the ones that you really want to hit and then print that out, put it on a note card, whatever, put it on the back of a business card of all the things I want to go to so that you have a battle plan on day one. You're walking in at 8 a.m. I have to be here. At 12 p.m. I have to be here, and I'm going to wrap up the day here. Set your Adam, what I, yeah, I agree with you because what I do is, so when the agenda is there, and ready to go. So sometimes when you register for an event, what happens is the agenda is not ready, but they do tell you a date that it's going to be ready. I throw that date into my calendar as a reminder. And I say, okay, it's going to be available here. I want to be the first come first serve. I want to get, these are the sessions that I definitely want to get into. And some will have reserve seating, some will yeah. have wish lists, and you can actually put some of them on there. The more advanced portals allow you to uh, put certain sessions in there and you can't double stack some, or you can't, yeah. but you can put them on your wish list. I agree. Um, what I like to do is that I go through, uh, I, I like it that it's available on my mobile phone too. That way I can see it immediately. I do see the value of you actually printing it out because a lot of the apps might not work when they're on site because they're so, so everybody's on Great automatically point. on this application yeah. and it's so bogged down. Everybody real quick, we're talking about Adam Kranitz around uh, conferencing like a champion and how to get the most out of any conference that works, whether it's one day, two day or a week long conference. And we just wrapped up uh, tip number two, I believe, and we're going to be moving on to tip number three, unless Adam has more to add to tip number two. I'll give you a tip to tip number two. We'll wrap it up with this idea. Once you have that agenda set, share that, right? Share it on social media. If you're a social media, you know, uh, 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 you're on LinkedIn or Twitter, or whatever, uh, or share it with uh, your partners or your customers, and that gives you an opportunity to meet up together. Hey, we can grab a seat together at this session at this time and then grab coffee afterwards. We can take notes together or we can compare notes from that session, right? So by sharing that agenda with your colleagues who are also attending or your partners who might be attending, you have an opportunity to meet up and, and kind of interact in, in that space, right? All right. So that's setting the agenda. To tip number two. Tip hmm, 2.2. We're going to have sub tips. Tips or tips. <laughs> All right. So what do we got next? Next up number is three. number three, and let's share that. Now, are we still in the pre? We're not even in the show, or we're not even in the show yet, John. What's 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 taking so long here? No, I so I, I like that we have a lot of pre-show, like all, kind of prepare yourself for the actual live event itself. It's, it's all in the prep, man. It's all in the prep. All right, tip number three: pre-show. Ask for an invite. All right. So, what does that mean? All right. In your role in the organization, it's very likely that you're working with customer success managers, account managers, uh, partners, partner marketing managers, partner alliance managers. You're probably working with a lot of vendors in the industry who will also have a presence at that industry event. So what I would recommend is, again, probably two to three weeks before the show, reach out, and I'm not saying spam everybody, but reach out to the people you have relationships in the industry, 
a little email said, I am planning to be at show X. Is anybody from your team going to be there? I'd love to meet up uh, for a brief session. And by the way, is there any after show events that I should think about attending? Right. Because it's sometimes it's hard. A big part of these shows, as you know, John, is, is it, why do you go to a show? It's to build relationships in the industry and to reconnect with people, especially in this world of remote, remote work first, right? Work where we want to build those relationships in the real world, IRL. And so by asking for an invite, right, you are, you gained entry to these post uh, conference sessions and happy hours and parties and get togethers and uh, cocktail hours. And, and so just reach out, say, hey, vendor, is there anything that, you know, that you guys are hosting that uh, I should consider attending? And if you've been a good customer for them, they, I'm sure they'd be delighted to have you. But you got to make the ask because they may not have your email address and they may not be thinking about inviting you. Just make the ask. The worst they can say is no, there's nothing. But I almost guarantee you there's going to be something that they recommend. Right? I like how so, you worded it. Is there any after events that I should be attending? Yeah. And I'll tell you what. The after events, the networking, the in-person stuff is crucial and key to any relationship out there when you are building it within your vendors, within your customers, within your mm -hmm. partners. Mm -hmm. Those are where a lot of stuff gets done in the conversations. That's where you start to humanize the people behind the brand and you start to understand the value of them. I'll tell you, I try to attend as many as possible when I'm out at an event and it can be daunting. And it can be challenged in the move for me, you know, which ones, but you got to pick and choose. I like how it's the ask of, is there any you think I should be attending? It's not like, hey, are you hosting anything? Exactly. Can you send me an invite? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You don't want to be, uh, you know, a uh, hang around or something, but you want to add value. And I, I love yep. that you said that, that about the relationship because it's so funny. Listen, you go on and we're going to talk about uh, on booth activity, but you do a demo, you talk to people on the booth and it's, it's, it's typically a little bit formal. It's a little bit scripted, right? And so to get the real answers or the real skinny or the real information, that informal um, cocktail reception where people loosen up a little bit more, tends to, you tend to get to know people a little bit more. You build that relationship and you might get a little bit more information that way that you typically get by just kind of having that interaction on the show floor. So the doors open a little bit wider in terms of the information sharing. And as you said, it's a great way to build relationships. But you can't do that without asking for the invite to get in the door and attend it. All right. Now, Adam, the tack on to that, would you recommend you're obviously following and not only the events on social media, yeah. but the companies and vendors that you are already part of interacting. So if they do post something about it, you can be on top of that and be proactive and say, you know what, I'm going to register for that because this is a great opportunity. Yeah, ab absolutely. So I would have a probably a hit list or a target account list of, of vendors that you want to, you know, vendors that I, that you're doing business with and vendors that you're potentially thinking about doing business with. Um, make that hit list, right? Go to their websites, look at their events pages. If they're if the vendor is worth their salt, they're going to have some kind of event listing on their corporate events page that, hey, we're attending and they're going to have information about booking a meeting or an after hour party that they're hosting, right? So go and see what they've got going on, see what demos that they're offering. If they're doing a lot of companies as well are having exclusive speakers on their booth at the show. So this is separate and distinct from uh, the, the, you know, the actual learning sessions that the event puts on, right? So that's part of building your, going back to build your agenda item, look at the different vendor pages and see what they, what activities that they're hosting on their booth and work that into your, your, your calendar as well say, Hey, I've got XYZ luminary speaking on the, uh, on the, uh, you know, whatever vendor booth right now. And I really want to catch that. And that'll be a, actually probably a little bit more intimate opportunity because obviously the booth is small. There's going to be fewer people there. And you can probably walk up and talk to that person at the conclusion of their, of, of their presentation on the stage, on the, on the vendor stage. So everybody, we're talking with Adam Kranitz, a SaaS marketing leader around conferencing like a champion. And we've kind of went through just the pre-show already. First one is the business cards. And while at first I didn't agree, I do agree now, given that my past experience of having business cards, that paper thing, when I come home, I have a full stack that I need to go through. I do it for them. Well, they do it for me. I should do it for them. Then we talked about the agenda, which is pre-tip number two is build your agenda, know where you need to go, when you want to go, and the rest can be built in as wish lists. And the other, the third one, which 
I would have thought that it would be number three, but those after party, those events that you're looking for are very key to the relationship building. So have an idea in mind on when they are and when you'd like to attend and ask if there's anything worthwhile that you think you should attend. Adam, this is great so far. Let's talk about tip number four if we're there. Okay. Are you ready to uh, actually attend the show now? I don't know. I'm already in sight <laughs> the pre-prep to go. All right. Do the so demo. Prep- mm. So, okay. So let's review. You got your, you got your, your business cards. You've set the agenda. You've been invited to after our part. Now let's actually attend the event. Now, I'm not going to give you tips about wear comfy shoes you should, or, you know, bring a bottle of water you should, or bring a backpack. Actually, I, I thought when you, we talked about this title, you were going to give everybody the traditional tips of, hey, shoes, uh, yeah. water, yeah, take a break, backpack. food, yeah, yeah. backpack, yeah. all yeah. the stuff that you should naturally be doing that people kind of get, but you're really diving into the in-depth stuff that should be done. And we're right now we're talking about tip number four. Do the demo. Do the demo. What What does that what does that mean? Okay. So listen, you're as a software engineer or an engineering manager or whatever your title, you are probably working with a technology stack that has DevOps tools or sales and marketing technology or CRM systems, et cetera, et cetera. And you're it's very likely that you will have those vendors in your technology stack presenting as a vendor at this trade show in the expo hall. So again, two different things, right? There's the learning sessions over there, and then there's the expo hall. And people typically think of the expo hall as, let me just walk by the booth, grab some swag, and (laughs) keep going, right? Like, no, man, you've got to get that target list of vendors, walk up to them. And I know kind of it's tough, but I trust, trust me, even if, even if, you're not, and listen, I'm kind of, an, kind of an introvert generally and don't always like to approach people. But when I've stood on a booth, um, it's important to me to draw people in and have a conversation. And we're, we're there on that booth as vendors because we're friendly people and we know how to engage and we know how to make you feel comfortable and we know how to have a conversation about the product. That's not a sales pitch. It's telling you, you know, what you need to know. So I encourage you not to think of people on the booth as like, oh, let me just like, they don't have time for me or I'm not important. Like, let me sneak in here, grab this swag yeah, and this. grab their white paper and I'm out. Yeah, exactly. It's like, talk to them. They're there to talk to you. And I love the best part of like what I do is I just love having conversations with people who are passionate about what they do and then can connect that to how we solve a problem that they're that they're facing or potentially facing or the organization is facing. So we're there for the conversations on booth. So walk. So first thing first is walk up and ask for a demo. And don't just say, give me the demo or say, oh, I use the product. Here's a couple of things you could say as a conversation service. I've been using XYZ software for two years and we love it. Can you tell me what's new? Because oftentimes in our daily life using the software, we kind of, we don't get the emails or we don't subscribe to the blog or whatever from the vendor. We, we don't kind of know, you know, SaaS software, there's new stuff being released all the time, right? We kind of forget about it or don't hear it for whatever reason. So, hey, what's new in the last six months, right? Is there anything new that you're showing at the show? And what should I be looking for on the horizon with the product? And they're not going to be able to give you a full roadmap. Nobody will, but you could... If you talk to them enough, they'll they'll intimate some of the things that they're thinking about and working on. So that's the first thing is ask for the demo, ask for what's new, ask for what's been released at the show. Here's the second thing. Um, they The person that you're talking to, generally speaking, is going to be highly knowledgeable about the product. They're going to be either you know, kind of the UX guy or the product manager or the product marketing manager or the engineer who developed it. That's who's the sales engineer, the solutions engineer. That's who's doing the demo of the product, right? So they're deeply knowledgeable about it. So talk to them about, hey, and then by the way, go to your team first and say, who do you want me to talk to, right? And what questions do you have for those vendors? Because generally speaking, not everybody's going to have access to the CSM, for that vendor. So this is an opportunity for you to get some real skinny on what's going on with the product. So, hey, my team has had this challenge with the product. Either it's uh, not scaling for our data sizes or, you know, we, we, we're we having trouble supporting 
uh, large uh, groups of users, whatever, go talk to them and say, here's some of the chances we've been having, right? Who, who should I talk to about this? Have you been addressing this in the roadmap? As, have you made any changes recently? And get that information about that product feedback, right? And then ask, if you're so inclined, are there any product advisory committees that I could join? Do you have any customer association teams that I could join? Are there any forums where I can contribute product feedback to? And they're going to love that. That's why these people go to the shows because they're looking for real user feedback and customer experience on how to improve the product. So you're going to say, yeah, sometimes that product manager, that director of product management says, here's my personal email address. I want you to email me whenever something comes up, right? So build that connection ask, and, and be, and, and by the way, John, please don't do this. Please do not use those people on the booth for customer support. Oh, <laughs> do not, oh. do not. Hey, I got spend, this problem. How do you fix this? Even worse. And I've seen this so many times, even worse. You already have a ticket in with the company <laughs> that they've been working on for six months or whatever is a bug. If the ticket is in, the company knows about the problem. All right. Don't spend 30 minutes of that person's time on the booth telling them about that ticket. Hey, can you go look up this ticket number for me? Where is it at? <laughs> Oh, it's been a bug for six months and we can't get anything done. I'm like, that's what customer support is for, to help you with that issue. The booth is not customer success, it's not customer support. It's not the help desk, right? They're there to help you understand how to make the best use out of the product, right? So don't, oh, don't get them I bogged down. Seen. I, I know. Oh. Don't get them bogged down in the bugs, man. I Listen, all software... Are gonna ha is gonna have a glitch. All software is gonna have a bug. All software is not gonna act as we expect it to all the time. That's just part of what we do in this world in software development. No software is perfect, right? So just accept that. But have an honest conversation with people about saying, "Hey, listen, we've had product quality issues for a year now. What's been the roadmap? What is the roadmap to address that?" I mean, that's a, certainly a, a fine question to ask. But don't get into the weeds about a specific ticket that you have open and the customer support guys aren't getting back to me and all that <laughs> stuff. Adam, I was, at, the foreign court. I was at NAB in New York. They had the Da Vinci Resolve section there. Really cool. They had very yep. technical folks that you can talk about. I think, though, this was allowed, by the way. So, But I do feel seen a little bit. Uh, every time I'm rendering after using Fusion, it was starting to, like, lag or I couldn't see it completely. And I was just asking the guy, was there, like, you know, some pre-rendering or proxy or stuff that I could do? And the guy was very intrigued by my question. And he was uh, a, a technical person who was showing people how to resolve certain issues. I didn't have a ticket or anything. It was just a generic yeah. question that I couldn't figure out on, on my own. My only way to work around it was to render it and then pull it back in. That was complete render. So it wasn't trying to render. But long story short, I did it. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing too, right? If you're like doing stuff online and you figure, you think you found an edge case that nobody else is talking about. Like between the interaction between, a, you know, a third party plugin or a, a round tripping a project from one application to another, you think you found an edge case and nobody else have that conversation. Hey, have you looked at the interplay between these two, these two products and this, this hiccup that I've experienced, document it, do some screen yeah. grabs, say, follow up with that person, give them your business card, take their business card, follow up after the show. Oh, that goes I'm back sure to the business to card. It goes back to the business card. They're going to want to follow up on that. They're not going to be able to yep. solve it on the booth. Or maybe they said, you know what? I've heard a couple of people mention that we need to think about addressing that. All right. This is more than an edge case. It's actually maybe core to the product. So that that's, that's certainly applicable, but you, you get my point about not bogging them yep. down in, in, in the help desk ticket. All right. So Adam the demo. Yes. No, I wanted to jump on. And so with this tip number four of doing the demo in tip number two, you said have an agenda. Now this agenda was geared towards the sessions that are happening do you feel the value of having an agenda for the expo hall based off the vendor list that's there and available to you for most summits or events on who you want to go and see? That's a great point. Thank you for bringing it up, John. So absolutely, when you build your calendar, make sure to provide yourself expo hall time. You don't mm -hmm. need to be there all day. You're not going to be able to see everything. It's just not possible for the larger shows. That's why it's a multi-day show. So give yourself like two or three hours on the show floor. Um, Typically, if you can do it, do it early morning, like when doors open, if there's no sessions that you're going to, because it's a, the, the traffic is just going to be lighter and you're going to have a better opportunity to engage with the booth staff. And they're going to be yep. a little fresher in the morning too, by the way. 
Uh, try not to do it. And please, for the love of everything, don't walk up to them at a minute to doors close with an expectation of having, you know, because they're probably needing to get somewhere, right? They're not going to have a drink, but they need to get to the next event, the next post event. So try to try to get there, you know, at least 30 minutes before doors close or early in the morning. But yes, build that time into your schedule for the expo hall and then have that hit list, you know, part stack rank it, prioritize who are the five most important vendors that I need to engage with at this show, right? And so here's the next thing. You do the demo, you ask them those questions, you talk about roadmap, you talk about issues, you talk about, and also say, hey, listen, in some cases, you're having a great experience with the product. You say, listen, I want you, if you have the authority to do this or talk to the marketing department, say, I, I would love to give a review for the software on G2 or Captera or something like that. Can I do that for you? And what would you like me to, what would you like me to express about the product? Or, or say, hey, you might think about us uh, for a customer taste study. Let me give you the information of our marketing person who can connect us and maybe we can work that out, right? So give them a little bit something back in return because they're constantly looking for that sort of feedback from the customer community as well. All right, so do the demo. And then the last thing I have about doing Whoa. the demo. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. This is still, wait, is this a sub tip? To this tip is a number four for demo. Okay, right. okay. I I wanted to stop you before you hit tip number five. Okay, let's talk yeah. about the sub to tip four tip. Four point four a wherever <laughs> we're at at this point. So, this is the most powerful thing you've got. This pen. When you're doing these demos, take great notes, right, about your conversation. Who you talk to, get their information, what their role is, what you discussed, right? Because we're going to talk about this in the next tip. Right. So make sure you're taking, we're going to roll this into the next tip, but make sure you're taking good notes. I don't care if you do it on your iPad, your Kindle, your whatever device, take great notes during that conversation. Don't just, if you've got a perfect memory, great, more power to you. I don't. So I take great notes, stick it back in your backpack and carry it with you, but hit all those points that you discuss so that you have clarity about what was said. Um, because there's a lot to remember. So take great notes is the last tip I have for that demo experience. Even, you know, take some, you know, if they'll allow it, take your phone out and take some, you know, pictures, screenshots, what they're doing, or take a short video of them doing it. Whatever you need to kind of recall the conversation, you know, make sure you do that. And don't just leave it up to memory, you know, you know, a week later when you're, when you're back in the office. All right. I think taking the great notes leads back to also knowing who you're talking to, documenting and getting their information, get their business card exchanges. And in fact, let's recap what we're talking about. We're talking about conferencing like a champion with Adam Kranitz, who's a SaaS marketing leader. We've talked about tip number one, which these this is a pre one is get those business cards. You got to check out the beginning of this podcast on the value of those. I'll tell you what, I, I'm ordering mine probably after the show. Number two, the agenda. Make sure you map out where you want to go. And we just talked about doing the demo in tip four. You can also map out your agenda for your expo hall and who you'd like to see based off of your sessions. Number three, which I would have never guessed is in there, but ask if there's any important events that you should be attending afterwards. There's nothing wrong with it. There's a great customer in real life interaction, networking that happens after the event or summit that you're at, where you can get a lot of conversations, get a lot of things done. And then tip number four, we just recapped is do the demo, actually walk up there and talk to them. They want to show you, they want to interact with you. They want to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, before we get to tip number five, Adam, I got to tell you, when I was at some of the summits, I would go up and uh, I know some are always that little, you're in the booth and you just don't want to approach that person that's walking by be like, I'm tired of people saying, no, just give me the swag. I actually would walk up and be like, give me your 60 second elevator pitch. Right. Mm -hmm. And that allows it to break the ice. Like he's like, I I've never heard that before. So they start to get in and then all of a sudden you can start to feel them warm up into their thing. And then, then the questions happen. Why, what does this do? What is the value? I've never heard of this company, but tell me about it. You know, and that's usually where I'll go up to people that I don't, I've never heard of their product or service. And I'm like, just give it to me. And it allows them to warm up and interact. And I'm like, all right, let's see a demo of this. Yeah. I, I'll add on to that. I think that's a great point, John. It, it's very easy to gravitate to the massive boosts like the data dogs and the VM wares and the Dells and the red hats and the IBMs and all those guys. Great. You should you know spend some time there, see what's going on. Don't skip out on the little 10 by 10 or the kiosk ones, yep. right. Or the five by fives, whatever they are, because those are the next potential big product, you know, two years from now. 
Right? Yep. This is maybe their first show and they've got something that's going to disrupt the industry. Right. Who would have imagined that, you know, chat GPT would be as big as it is, you know, a year ago. Right. So that's what happens. As we all know, in this industry, change comes very, very quickly. So spend some time checking out the people you've never heard of before and look at their literature. And if it piques your curiosity, exactly. Ask them for that 30 second pitch. Do you have a freemium version? Do you have a trial I can check out? Where should I go for more information? And put that in your back pocket as a potential resource a year from now, because I can guarantee you two or three years from now, if they've done their job right, that vendor, they're the next 50 by 50 booth and they're the game changer. Data yep. Dog didn't come out of the womb as a, uh, you know, a massive trade show booth. They started as a little DevOps tool that nobody had ever heard of. So get in early on that as well. And don't ignore the, the guys on the, you know, the back wall of the booth be it by the, uh, by the commissary, right? They're, yep. they're, they're the next big guy potentially. I agree with you. All right, Adam, let's go to tip number five. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So let's talk about what happens uh, after the show. Okay. So this is tip five, post-show. Review your notes and follow up. Now, admittedly, uh, I was looking for a picture of, you know, me kind of typing on my laptop, but the best I could come up with was a picture of my, my, my two daughters uh, typing up notes on the typewriter. All right. So uh, again, getting back to that. This is uh, what Adam uses every day for his notes. No, I'm just kidding. So paper business cards and typewriters. So I'm really, really dating myself here. But uh, the idea here is when you get back to your desk, don't delay. Um, take all those notes from the product sessions, from the demos, those business cards, and put them into a Google Doc or some other, you know, Jira or Confluence or whatever you use in your organization to collaborate and share information with and start structuring it based on either vendors, uh, uh, existing customers or vendors that you're using today and what's new and what you should be on the lookout for and things learned. And then things that we should explore, we should look at that are opportunities for us in the future that may solve a problem in our technology stack, right? And then share that with the, with the engineering team, share it with the product manager, share it with the CEO, because you the company is paying for you not only for you to get smarter about what you do but to bring that knowledge back into the organization what i've actually asked my direct reports to do in the past is if they want to do attend a trade show you know and the cost is within reason my caveat is that's fine but you have to come back and do a one-hour presentation about key results key observations and what we could be doing as an organization to leverage what you learned at the show right? And give that to a group and then record it and make it available as on-demand content, right? So bring that and, and to be able to do that, you'll have to have taken really good notes, great conversations, take some photos. We've all got powerful computational photography in our pockets with our iPhones. Take lots of pictures of the trade shows. By the way, secret tip, your competitors' booths might be there as well, right? Take pictures of the competitors' booth. And the activity that's happening, maybe there's not a lot of activity at that customer booth, or maybe there's a ton happening, or maybe there's certain something going on. So take some pictures of that as well and share that internally, right, with the with the marketing team. Hey, I observed this, right, at competitor XYZ. So take great notes, written notes, document it with photography, and share that with an organization, written and with a presentation if you feel inclined to do that, and make sure that the people who invested in you are aware of the return on investment you're providing back into the organization. And that should be part of your professional development. Have that discussion with your one-on-ones and your OKRs. Like, I want to attend this event for this professional development, and this is the key result that we're going to get out of it, right? So that should be part of what your job is, to bringing that information back into the organization. So review your notes, follow up, do the presentations, and then fire off those LinkedIn invites, right, to all those business cards you've connected. With a little note, hey, remember me? We 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 had a discussion about this topic on your booth. Thank you so much for the time you spent with me. I look forward to learning more about about what's going on in your organization. Fire those LinkedIn notes off. Fire uh, if if it's not LinkedIn, shoot a quick email note. Again, hey, it was wonderful to meet you. So they've then captured in their inbox now, in their inbox, even if they archived it, that email. If they got to go back and remember, hey, I had that great conversation with that guy. They're going to go to Gmail search uh, and and. Like look for you and they're going to find that email that you sent six months ago, right? So that's in there with your contact information and what you talked about. Summarize what you talked about, 
and so they can reach out to you. All right. So make sure that you contact everybody with a short note about what you talked about, thanking them for their time and make sure your contact information is in there as well and get that out the door. This is a this is like almost the second job, all this work. But if you commit to actually professionalizing and operationalizing your attendance at a trade show, it's going to power your career development in the organization. People are going to sit up and take notice and you're going to be considered a subject matter expert in your in your uh, in your field. And by the way, you're going to be continually asked to go back and do more of these things, right? So you're building that credibility in the organization to being uh, somebody who's, who can do knowledge share and knowledge transfer, which I think is incredibly exciting and important, especially the soft skill sides. You know, this is kind of a getting off the topic a little bit, John, but as we all become more automated and more uh, leveraging AI and machine learning to, to do our workforce. The soft skills are the skills that AI can't replicate. And so if we build our soft skills around relationship building, communications, presentation, influencing people in an organization by doing this sort of work, you're building your career. It's not just, hey, I know how to do X as far as uh, software development or DevOps or marketing or sales. It's about having those soft skills that make you more flexible and more desirable in an organization, influencing communication, presentation, uh, distilling complexity into clarity in an organization, what's happening in the industry, right? Very, very important for professional development in, in today's you know, world where our hard skills are increasingly getting automated out of existence. So Adam, before we wrap things up, my question for step number five is you said you review your notes and follow up. As an entrepreneur, I'm always there for an event for a number of things and three main things. One, networking, right? I want to communicate, reach out to anybody. Uh, and I want to learn. I'm learning about what are the services, products, and things that are coming up, not only from the company that's hosting the event, but also the vendors. In other words, you know, uh, lead generation. I'm always reaching out and I'm talking to those at the booth. What is their product? How it is? Oh man, this really interests me. I'd like to represent you. And so now I've got their business card. I've got my notes. The event is over. Is there a certain timeline that I should be following up in? Because here's, here's me. I'm sitting at the airport waiting to get my plane to leave. I'm starting to follow up with everybody from the event. Is it too soon? Is it should I be waiting a couple of days? Should I wait a week to follow up? What's an optimal time to follow up to reach out? I mean, we all connect on LinkedIn right away and yeah. we drop that note. Don't get me wrong. I do it immediately while I'm there. Yeah. We're connecting. But what about that email? Yeah, I would probably, you know, so from my experience seeing doing email marketing post event um, to, you know, the, your leads and prospects and your boost scans, I really feel it's better to give people at least two, three, four business days after a show closes for people to get back home, get settled back in and to get ramped up and kind of getting through things again to drop that first email, right? I would not wait longer than seven to eight business days because you're just kind of, by then people have moved on to other things, right? And they're getting ready for the next thing. So I would say three to four business days after event to start getting those emails out. LinkedIn connections, kind of a different thing. Just do those immediately. And then don't wait longer than seven, eight business days to, to, to get that email communications out and that connection and, and, and get that relationship building started. All right. Awesome. So Adam, before we close things out, is there anything you'd like to leave with our audience? So listen, the biggest thing is have fun, um, you know, be engaging, go talk to people. When you go to a trade show and event, you're going to spend most of your time talking, 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 have your elevator pitch down, right? This is who I am. This is what I do. And this is why I'm here on behalf of our company. And this is what our company does, right? Talk to the marketing department, talk to whoever, ask them, what's the pitch that I need to convey about what our company does and, 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 and how I should communicate that value. What's the value prop? Also, one final tip. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. I'm a big swag guy. I love swag. Um, when you ask those business socks. cards... I, I I got my socks. I got my, I got lots of socks. I got lots of different stuff. They tend to last. I like socks. It's my favorite thing. And tote bags. Um, but ask your marketing department before you go to the show, hey, do you have any spare branded t-shirts in my size that I can take with me to the show and wear around the expo floor? Or a hoodie 
or whatever backpack or whatever you got. It's so actually imagine. huge. You're, you're branding them while you're walking. So right. Why not show off your brand and representation uh, of who you are? Cause people might want to talk, walk up to you and have a conversation about it, or it's just great marketing. So ask yep. the marketing team, Hey, can you give me anything that I can use to show off? And if I can't imagine a marketing team that wouldn't say, Hey, yeah, we can, we can, quickly print you out, you know, a long sleeve tee or whatever it is that that they can make. It's not hard to do those things and they should be able to turn that around in seven days. So ask for that branded swag so you can represent the brand on on site and and have a good time. But most important thing is have fun, talk to people. Everybody, everybody at that show is there to build relationships and engage and have a discussion. And it's in everybody's professional interests to be open, to be friendly and to be engaging. If you have the opposite of experience with any vendor or brand at one of these shows, you know, you probably know you don't want to do business with them. So have fun, have a good time, be prepared, right? And then bring all that knowledge. Don't let that knowledge go into a black hole. Bring yep. that knowledge back to the organization and publish it on the internet, on the Confluence page, wherever you can in, in a Slack channel, right? Yep. Do, maybe set up a Slack channel, by the way, I swear, last one, set up a Slack channel or Teams channel for updates from Trade Show XYZ. And anybody who wants to join it can join it and you can do post photos, you can post short video clips, you can post updates, here's what I'm seeing, get real-time feedback. People say, oh, make sure to go over there and ask them about this and that. So you can have that communications with people and kind of have that live yeah. update as well. So we'll find a tip for you. But otherwise, have fun. Uh, you're going on behalf of your employer. Make it a good event and and have fun. And if you see me or you see John, make sure to say hi to us. We're friendly guys. <laughs> exactly. Adam, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. This has been awesome. Thank you for having me, John. I can't wait to see you at the next event in the real world. In the meantime, have a wonderful end of your week and I'll see you soon. Yes, definitely. So everybody, we've been talking with Adam Cran. It's a SaaS marketing leader for conferencing like a champion. He's been giving us his five tips. Number one, business cards, the value of those. Also set your agenda, not only for the event itself in sessions, but also the expo hall. Number three, events, post events. They're very key to anything. Number four, while you're there, ask for the demo. Do the demo, find out the value. And number five, which is the most critical that I imagine it's gonna be is review your notes and do your post follow-up. These are the five tips that will make a successful conference champion. Everybody, Adam Kranitz joining us. Adam, once again, thank you so much. Thank you, John. All right, everybody. My name's John Meyer. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notify because guess what? We're out of here.